So the first family we're going to look at, we're going to call the axis family. On the unit circle, the axis family has four points. Those four points where the axes intersect the unit circle. If we start by looking at our degrees, and we look at this first point on the positive x-axis, does it make sense that that angle would be zero degrees? Or if you went all the way around, you could also say 360 degrees. At the next point on the unit circle, what angle would this be? 90 degrees. Here, 180. And down here, 270 degrees. And then, of course, all the way around would be 360. So those are the angles of our axis family. If we did them in radians, 0 and 360 would be 0 and 2 pi. 90 degrees would be? 90. Half of pi or pi over 2. 180 degrees would be? 270 degrees. 3 pi over 2. In fact, if this is 1 pi over 2, does this make sense that this is 2 pi over 2? 3 pi over 2. 4 pi over 2, which would make 2 pi. So we could count by pi over 2s as we went along. What is the coordinate of this point? Which one should we start with? What's easier to figure out? Is it easier to figure out the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate? The y-coordinate would be easy. What would the y-coordinate be? It would be 0. Good, because it's right on the x-axis. And it would be 1. Why is it 1? Because it's a unit circle with a radius of 1. What's this point going to be up here? 0 comma 1. Here we'd have negative 1 comma 0. And down here we have 0 comma negative 1. Excellent. Now we can use one of our big ideas. OK? Dawson, I need you to pick a volunteer to tell me what cos of pi is without their calculator in their mind. Erwin. It's okay to say I have no idea. No idea. Okay. So we're doing, we're trying to figure out what cos of pi is. We just labeled the points on the unit circle. <laughs> pi is right here. The point on the unit circle is negative 1, comma 0. We have our big idea. Our big idea is the coordinates on a unit circle are always cos theta comma sine theta. So if theta is pi, we end up right here. What's cos of pi going to be? Negative 1. What is sine of 270 degrees? Erwin, pick someone. Sine of 270 degrees is negative 1. Because here is our coordinate at 270 degrees at 0, negative 1. The big idea says sine is the y coordinate. So sine of 270 degrees is negative 1. What's cos of 0? Yeah. Oh, cos of 0. Well, the point ends here at 1, comma 0. Cos is the x-coordinate, so I'm going to have to say 1. Is that right? Yes, it is. Good. So if we can label the points on the unit circle, we're able to say quickly what cos theta and sine theta is. And the axis family is so easy to label because the radius is 1 that you now know sine and cos of all of these angles quickly. And in fact, 
we can also add what tan of these angles is. So if we do tan of 0, what will we get? We will get 0. Because we can do sine divided by cos, and since sine is the y-coordinate and cos is the x-coordinate, you could have 0 over 1, but 0 over 1 is just equal to 0. Same thing over here. Can you see that tan of pi would equal 0? What's going to happen at tan of pi over 2? It is not possible. Because you would get 1 divided by 0, and that's not possible. Or you can write undefined. And same thing happens at tan of 3 pi over 2. It is also undefined. So this is our axis found. Good to go? So for the pi over 4 family, the 45 degree family, we go back and I think you have space right here. So let's write out special triangle for 45 degrees. And we'll just do it in degrees. We could have said special triangle for pi over 4 radians. But if we want to do sine, cos, and tan, we're going to need a right angle triangle. And if I make one of the angles 45 degrees, you can figure out the other angle. It's 45 degrees. By doing that, you make a special kind of triangle. What special kind of right triangle is this? It is an isosceles triangle. What do you know about isosceles triangles? Two sides are the same, and you could figure out the other side. So you can choose any value you would like. It'll work no matter what you choose. To keep things simple, if I make this side 1, you know this side's 1. And a squared plus b squared equals c squared would tell us that this side is a square root of 2. From that special triangle, you can now tell me what sine of 45 degrees is, what cos of 45 degrees is, and what tan of 45 degrees is. Sine of 45 is opposite over hypotenuse. Can you see you get 1 over root 2? Does that make sense? And if you rationalize the denominator, you will get root 2 over 2. Again, both of those answers would be correct. You could leave it as 1 over root 2, or you could write it as root 2 over 2. Can you see that cos of 45 will be the same? So I'm going to write root 2 over 2. 1 over root 2 is just fine. Generally, in multiple choice questions, they'll have the denominator rationalized, so you still have to know how to do that. And for the most part, when we memorize it, I find root 2 over 2. I memorize it that quicker, so I'll be labeling it with root 2 over 2. What's tan of 45? 1 over 1, which is just 1. Okay, that's going to be important. Now, with our pi over 4, 45 degree family, we have 1 two, three, four points in that family. If we go to label things in degrees, the 45 degree family means that the reference angle for each of those family members is 45 degrees. So this first angle is 45 degrees. What will this second one be in degrees? 135 because it would be 180 minus 45. In quadrant 3, you would get 225. In quadrant 4, you would get 315. In radians, 
this angle is pi over 4. So we could do the same thing where we take, you know, with degrees you did 180 minus 45 to get 135. How would you do that in radians? Well, you would have pi minus pi over 4. What would you get? 3 pi over 4. So that's one way you can figure out the next family member in radians for pi over 4. The other way is to think about fractions. You know that it's pi right here, right? Pi over 4 means that we have split this up into four equal sections. Can you see that half of the circle has been split up into four equal sections? Now, if we were counting, this would be 1 pi over 4. This would be 2 pi over 4s, which is pi over 2. Makes sense. This would be 3 pi over 4s. 4 pi over 4s. What's this one going to be? 5 pi over 4s. 6 pi over 4s. 7 pi over 4s. And the nice thing about radians is it's really easy to recognize if an angle belongs to the pi over 4 family because they all look the same. Whereas the degree family, you're like, maybe that one's adopted. I'm not sure. The 315, does that look like... I mean, the 135 and the 315 look kind of the same. They got the same numbers, just mixed up. But I don't know if I'd recognize a 315 and a 45 if I met them on the street because the numbers look different. Or maybe 3 plus 1 is 4, so that's why it's 45. I don't know. Okay. But the idea is with the radians, they all look the same. They're all pi over 4. So one of the nice things about radians is it's easy to recognize whether something's part of a pi over 4 family. Right? If I told you 3,195, is that part of the pi over 4 family? Not sure. But m if I say 101 pi over 4, you would say yes, that's part of the pi over 4 family. Now our big idea comes into play. What is the coordinate of that point? Yes? It'll be root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. What is the coordinate of this point? Negative root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. Can you see that the x-coordinate would have to be negative and the y-coordinate would still be positive? And then in quadrant 3, negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. They would both have to be negative. And in quadrant 4, the x-coordinate would be positive and the y-coordinate would be negative. Now, the x-coordinate is always cos, the y-coordinate is always sine. In this case, both cos and sine of 45 degrees are the same. They're both root 2 over 2. <coughs> but when we get to quadrant 2, if we think of our cast rule, only sine is positive in quadrant 2, and sine is the y-coordinate. Does it make sense? The y-coordinate is still positive, but now our x-coordinate is negative. And when we get to quadrant 3, only tan is positive. So both sine and cos are negative, And sure enough, both our x and our y coordinate are negative. Now when we go to figure out tan, well, we already know that tan of 45 degrees is 1. What's it going to be for tan of 3 pi over 4? No. Got to be careful. If, three, if the 3 was in front, 3 times tan of pi over 4 would be equal to 3. But tan of 3 pi over 4 makes the same triangle as pi over 4. We're just in quadrant 2 now. So the value is still going to be 1, but tan in quadrant 2 is negative. So we can use the idea of the cast rule to figure out if tan is positive or negative. 
We could also use the big idea that tan is sine divided by cos, and if you did root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2, you'd get negative 1 as well. Tan of 5 pi over 4 has the same reference angle, so it's going to have the same value as before, so it too will be 1, but will it be positive or negative? Positive. And if you did sine divided by cos, you'd have negative root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2, which would give you positive 1. And finally, tan of 7 pi over 4 is negative 1 as well. Okay, on your paper, right between the 30 degrees and the 60 degrees, all right. In this space in between these two triangles, so this space that you have right here, you are going to go and write special triangle for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Because what happens if you make a right angle triangle and you make one of the angles 60 degrees, the other one is 30 degrees. What kind of triangle is this? Is it isosceles? No. It's a right triangle, but we already did that. Is it uh, equilateral triangle? No. What do we call this triangle? Scalene. Scalene is a special name for a triangle that's not special. So they made a special name for it to make it kind of feel special, just because it's not special. All the sides are different. The angles are different. It's not special. We don't know anything about this triangle when it looks like this. The only thing special about this special triangle that's not special is that if you double it, so if I take this exact same triangle, replicate it, and put it beside each other, it, it makes an equilateral. Okay? And what do we know about an equilateral triangle? All the sides are equal. So we could pick any number we wanted for the sides. So if you wanted, you could pick pi for each of the sides and do all the math with side lengths of pi, it will be harder, but it'll still give you the same answers. I suggest using 2. Because if you use 2, this side will be 2. What will these two be? 2 in total, which means they both have to be 1 and 1. If you do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you will get the square root of 3. From this, you can now do sine of 30 cos of 30, tan of 30, sine of 60, cos of 60, and tan of 60. Anybody know why I would lose a half a mark right now? Because I didn't write the degree sign. So what I actually wrote here was sine of 30 radians, cos of 60 radians. We have to, if we're talking degrees, we need to, oh, I'd had that one. We need to have the degrees symbol. What is sine of 30 degrees? One over two. Cos of 30, root three over two. And tan of 30, one over root three or root three over three. Sine of 60, root 3 over 2. Cos of 60, 1 over 2. And tan of 60, root 3 over 1, or just root 3. Pi over 6 family. So first of all, let's make the dots. Here has a pi over 6 as a reference angle. All of these dots have 30 degrees or pi over 6 as a reference angle. When we go to our degrees, 
In quadrant one will be 30 degrees. In quadrant two, 150. In quadrant three, 210. And in quadrant four, 330. This will be pi over 6. What is the next one going to be? Of course, if you divided 0 to pi into 6 sections, there would also be a dot here, a dot here, a dot here. Does that make sense for dividing into 6 equal sections? So this one will be 5 pi over 6. The next one, 7 pi over 6. And the last one? 11 pi over 6. It happens to always be the next number that doesn't simplify. Like you can't do 2 pi over 6, that simplifies to pi over 3. You can't do 3 pi over 6 because it simplifies to pi over 2. 4 pi over 6 is 2 pi over 3, but 5 pi over 6 doesn't simplify. And that's how you can find the next family member as well. Some patterns, well, we'll talk about patterns in a second. We'll finish up these two families. What are the coordinates here? Remember, our coordinates are cos comma sine. We go to our special triangle. What was cos of 30 degrees? Root 3 over 2. What is sine of 30 degrees? 1 over 2. If you look at that coordinate, which coordinate looks like it's closer to half? The x coordinate or the y coordinate? Here's our x. We know this is 1 because that's the radius. Does this look like it's halfway between 0 and 1? Here's our y. This is 1. Does it look like it's halfway between 0 and 1? So one of the ways you can figure out what this coordinate is going to be is by visualizing 30 degrees, putting that point there, and you'll see the y coordinate makes sense to be 1 half way more than the x coordinate does for making sense to be 1 half. Over here in quadrant 2, the x coordinate would be negative, the y coordinate positive. Here they would be both negative. And here, the x-coordinate would be positive and the y-coordinate would be negative. So just knowing your cast rule or about your x and your y-coordinates, you can figure out all of these. They all have the same reference angle, so sine and cos are going to be the same. The x and the y-coordinates are going to be the same. And finally, when we figure out tan, tan of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3. Tan of 5 pi over 6 will be negative root 3 over 3. Tan of 7 pi over 6 is positive root 3 over 3. And tan of 11 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 3. Here's our 60 degree dots degrees.
can check how you did.